I'm now going to show you an example of how we use the equations derived in the last video to do inverse kinematics for a two degree of freedom, uh, two dimensional Stewart platform. I'm going to start off by drawing the base frame. Then I'm going to draw in some of the design characteristics, the locations of the um, where the links are fixed to the base and the locations where the links are fixed to the platform. I then also need to draw in my frame one on the platform. Let's suppose that the first joint is connected to the base frame at x equals 1, y equals 1. And let's suppose that the second joint is connected to the base at x equals 3, y equals 2. The other two design variables that I have to specify is the location where these joints are attached to the platform. I'm going to suppose that this joint is attached to the platform in frame 1 at position 0 0.50. 0. That is where x1 is equal to 0 0.5 and y1 is equal to 0. Similarly, I'm going to assume that this other point is at negative 0 0.50. 0. Now, I'm going to specify the rotation and the position that I would like to have the platform be in. So let's suppose that the desired position for the platform is at x equals 2, and let's say y is equal to 4. In other words, I want this location in the base frame in x0, y0 to be 2, 4. I also have to specify what I would like the rotation matrix to be for the platform relative to the base frame. For now, I'm going to specify that I want the platform to have no rotation relative to the base frame. So in order to specify that with my rotation matrix, I make the rotation matrix to be a, uh, the identity matrix. I made the rotation matrix be 2 by 2 here because we're in two-dimensional space. If we were doing this problem in three-dimensional space, then the rotation matrix would need to be a 3 by 3 matrix, as we've seen previously. So now that I have my variables all specified, I'm going to write down the equation for inverse kinematics. The vector SI, that is the vector from the bottom of a joint to the top of the joint, is equal to the desired position of the center of the platform plus the rotation matrix times B. B is the position where the joint is attached at the top of at the platform in frame 1 minus the vector ai where ai is the vector from the center of frame 0 to the location where the bottom of the joint is attached to the ground I'm now going to plug in some things for these variables. SI is the thing I'm solving for, so I'll leave it alone. And I'll then plug in the vector for P. That's the desired position of the center of the platform in the base frame. I said that would be 2, 4, so I'll plug that in. Plus the rotation matrix, which in this case is the identity matrix, because I don't want the platform to be rotated at all. And that rotation matrix is multiplied by B. 
uh, I'll be doing this. This is my calculation right now for the first joint. So I'll go and get B1. B1 is right over here. That's the vector uh, specifying the location of where the joint is attached to the platform. So B1 is going to be negative 0 0.5, 0, minus AI. A is the vector from the center of frame 0 to the location where the bottom of the joint is attached to the ground. So that vector is going to be 1, 1. So I now do this calculation. 2, 4, plus I'll multiply this vector times this matrix. So I get 1 times negative 0.5. And then down here I get 0 times negative 0.5 plus 1 times 0. So that ends up being 0 minus 1, 1. And I get that S1 has to be 0 0.53. Let's look at what that means up here. 0 0.53 is the vector from the bottom of this joint up to the top of this joint. So it tells us that uh, this vector should be 0 0.5 over in the x direction and 3 up in the y direction. Well that makes sense from what we specified because if we go over 0 0.5 to get to this point and then over 0 0.5 again to get to the center that'll give us an x value of 2 which is what we specified. It also makes sense in the y direction because this point here is 1 and if we go up 3 in y that'll give us our y value of 4 which we specified. So it looks right now like we got the correct answer for S1. Let's see if we can calculate the value for S2 as well. The value for P is going to remain the same because P is our desired position of the platform. The rotation matrix will also remain the same. But the value for B will be different. B for joint number 2 is this other vector over here. It will be 0 0.51 or 0 0.50. Then we have to get A. A is the vector from the center of frame 0 to the bottom of the joint. So that vector is going to be 3, 2. So now I'll do this calculation. I get 2, 4 plus 1 times 0 0.5 that's 0 0.5 and then 0 times 0 0.5 plus 1 times 0 I get 0 minus 3 2 so 2 plus 0 0.5 minus 3 is negative 0 0.5 and 4 minus 2 is 2 so this tells us that our vector from the bottom of this joint, joint number 2, to the top of joint number 2 is negative 0 0.5 in the x direction and 2 in the y direction. So if I go over negative 0.5 in x from this starting point I get to 2.5 and if I go an additional 0 0.5 from the the top of the joint to the center that gets us to x equals 2 which is correct that's what we were trying to get to. The y value starts out at 2 and then our s vector that we just solved for says we go up 2 additional and that gives us a y value of 4 um, which is again what we were looking for. So it looks like our s1 and s2 values are correct. The last thing we want to do here is we want to find the lengths of S1 and S2. The lengths are what we actually send to our controller 
to command the joint to do. Our joint will be able to ex expand or contract an amount that we command it to. So we want to find the lengths of S1 and S2. And that's fairly easy to do. So if we have S1 and that's equal to 0 0.5 3, we want to get the length of that. So I'm going to do the, uh, the magnitude of this vector. And what that's equal to is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So when I put this into my calculator, it tells me that the length of uh, that joint should be approximately 3.04. I can then do the same thing for S2. S2 we calculated to be negative 0.52 and we want to find the length of the vector so that we can send that value to the controller. So I'll take the square root of the first value, the x value, negative 0.5 squared and I'll add on the square of the second value, 2. And we find that the length of this joint should be about 2.06. Now that we have the values that will actually be sent to the controller to achieve this position and rotation, we're done.